a large model showman's engine, part 14, making a regulated extension that works. And this is the second attempt. The first idea did actually work, but it was a bit unworkmanlike. It comprised of three things, a piece of brass angle, a brass plate and a phosphor bronze bearing. The piece of brass angle was screwed up inside the canopy and a handle was fitted to a piece of 516 stainless steel which in turn connected to a clevis attached to the regulator handle extension lever. And when I moved the handle at the rear of the engine it seemed to work OK. But because the vertical lever describes an arc which is a much bigger arc because it's an extension and my original idea was the copper tube would just slide up and down the regulator handle. But to be honest, it was mechanically wrong. I'm not being OCD on this, but it felt horrible. So I immediately came up with a better idea. I had some of the angle left, albeit slightly shorter than the original piece, but just long enough to allow me to drill some holes at the same centres as the original piece of brass angle. And while I was doing this, I was thinking about the design. Obviously, I need to duplicate what I already had. And the simplest way to do this was to take the hanger that I'd made and draw around it onto a new piece of brass. Then saw it roughly to shape on the bandsaw, drill a hole in the center, and then clamp it to the original part using one of these things. This is called an engineer's clamp, and they really are clever. Well worth having in your workshop. By fitting the center bearing through the hole and then clamping the parts together with the engineer's clamp, it allowed me to finish them to size using my linisher, also known as a belt sander. Before separating the two brackets, I drilled through the 3 16 of an inch holes, and in this clip I'm using the second bracket to allow me to mark the position for the holes on the second piece of brass angle. Over now to the lathe. I need to make a piece of tubing, which is 5 16 of an inch internal diameter and half an inch outside diameter. And to make this, I started off by putting a piece of half an inch diameter brass bar in the chuck, centre drilling the end, and then drilling as far through as I possibly could using a 5 16 twist drill, withdrawing the twist drill frequently when I got to this stage. Because once the drill shank enters the hole, there's no way for the chips to get out. Then I turned the bar around in the chuck and did exactly the same at the other end. As always, using the centre drill first, followed by a 5 16 of an inch diameter twist drill. First of all, I drilled down the piece of brass tube with the twist drill held in the tailstock chuck in the normal way, to get maximum depth. As the drilling procedure progressed, I moved it further out of the tailstock chuck until it was only really gripped by about a quarter of an inch. And the twist drill did start to move slightly in the tailstock chuck. But eventually, it broke through the other side. And now I have a continuous tube with a 5 16 of an inch internal diameter. The next part of the job was to thread the outer diameter of the tube at each end using a half inch by 26 threads per inch die. Now I need to make some large nuts. I could have made four of these using the rotary table but I found a quicker method. I had a quick rummage through my box of spurious old brass water fittings and soon found some that I could machine in the lathe to make four rather nice large brass nuts, one larger than the rest which is the outer end. That's the part that's visible from the driver's point of view. They could all be the same size, it's just a cosmetic feature. Using a pair of my larger Barco spanners, I tighten the nuts in position. And when this part is bolted up inside the canopy, to the two substantial pieces of hardwood that support all the inner lights, it's going to be a very solid and rigid structure. The piece of stainless steel fits through the middle perfectly and with the handle attached to the piece of stainless steel, it swings very freely. This handle was something I put together using a piece of chrome steel bar with a ball on the end, which was originally used as an extension handle for a hand pump. All I did was shorten the tube that went over the hand pump lever. Once I've threaded the piece of stainless steel to fit into the handle, the phosphor bronze lock nut at the top of the handle will hold everything solid, and the phosphor bronze bolt that I made will clamp onto the thread of the stainless steel shaft and stop it from coming loose. Here's the original piece of stainless steel that I put together as an experiment, with the threaded piece of hexagon brass to connect it to another piece of stainless steel because it wasn't long enough. I need to make a modification to the tube that slides over the regulator to stop it from sliding up and down. And to do this, I need to drill and thread four holes around this piece of tube to clamp it in place. 
To make sure these holes are in the right place around the perimeter of the piece of copper, I should really use my rotary table in horizontal mode, but that takes a while to set up. All I did was fit a piece of quarter of an inch diameter stainless steel to the fitting on the end of the tube, and then I could use my calibrated eye to sight it up and make sure that it was level and that all the holes were at 90 degrees to each other. Not good engineering, I know, but it works for me. This clip shows that the holes are very regular around the perimeter. The next job is to thread these holes using a 4BA tap. I'm using my normal bearing lubricating oil as a lubricant to make sure the tap doesn't shear off. Copper can be difficult to work. To finish the job after the threading operation, I removed all the burrs using a needle file and then polished up the part on the polishing spindle. Then I shortened four 4BA hexagon bolts. Why are they made from brass and not steel? Well, two reasons. Brass doesn't rust, and also the brass bolts will not mark the original regulator handle. The four bolts hold the handle perfectly in position on the original regulator. The brass angle bearing assembly is now fitted up inside the canopy. I bent this piece of brass rod so I could check that the system worked before I made another clevis. And the good news is, yes, it worked perfectly. It was really silky smooth, and that was just with the bent piece of brass rod. So it was back to the rotary table one more time, and I made another clevis. Here I am cleaning it up. Now I have two clevises. There's more information about rotary table work in my series Model Engineering for Beginners, which is well worth a view, especially if you're a beginner. In this clip, I'm fitting a piece of stainless steel bar threaded 5 16 by 32 at each end, onto the two clevises. After I tightened them up against each other, I made sure that they were perfectly in line by sitting them on the bench to make sure they were level. The finished pair of clevises are a good match for the original bent piece of brass rod. There's just one more link to make, and it's one of these on the right-hand side. I made this one in a slightly different way, it was done on the rotary table, whereas the original one on the top of the handle was not done that way. In this clip, looking under the canopy at the rear of the engine, you can see how the system works. It moves the regulator back and forth very well. It's not sloppy, very firm, in fact it's better than the original handle, which when it's under steam is very difficult to move. And that's it. I have a working remote regulator which will make driving the engine far easier. Yesterday an electrician friend of mine called Andy came round and we started the lengthy procedure of rewiring all of the lights while strictly observing social distancing in these weird times. The leather belt is stretching nicely and very soon I'll be sending it back to my friend Andrew who will take out four inches of the belt and refix it back together. That's just to stop it flapping about because it works quite well as it is. For now I'll just leave the engine running to the end of the video which won't be long anyway. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.